Nigeria is a very well endowed country. So we're not lacking in resource. And our human resource is our strongest resource. Uh, you know, we should learn to build legacies or live life for others. But we run out of time. I have a question. What, what's your talent? What would you have been? And we have to go quickly before we run out of time. If oh you were gosh. not doing what, what did you I, want to I be? did tap dance. Yeah. I would have just been a lover boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Set up with this whole generation. You know, let's let, let that generation get away with everything. They're always right because they're older than we are. They know better, which they don't. You know, I mean, if they knew better, why would Nigeria still be in the state that it's in? It's been in their hands for however long. Religion is money in this country. Yeah. Okay. And even more so, not only is it money, it also works hand in hand or is twinned with politics. Mm -hmm. All right. From the examples of how you deal with the problems of Lagos, and if you come down to Lagos, solve VI, solve Mushi, and then you can learn, and then not, you cannot solve Nigeria's problem in 2019. I am not against worshipping God, I'm not against singing to God, I'm not against any of that. But there needs to be some consideration. I mean, not everybody buys into that. Today, we are less honest, we spend all the day in church, we give all the money to the church. So even if you are a true man of God, as far as I'm concerned, you are complicit yes. in the downfall yes. of this country. If the National Assembly members were asked to swear by Amadi Oha and Shongo and Thank the rest, you. a lot of them will not <laughs> forget. Yes. I'm not sure but quite. I, 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 I have a reason for why they swear. may not do that. <laughs> but I will, I will, I, I will yeah, be because debated. They know, they know yeah. the consequences. I will, I will, they will, I will never be sidetracked. To be honest, every sexual encounter you have means you've slept with everybody that, that person slept has with. slept with. Mm. And there are lots of viruses that don't even have any name that you know of that you will get for life and you will be transmitting this as you go along. The budget for sex in Nigeria annually, even in the world, is triple the national budget. Okay. What okay. I'm saying is yeah. we must fight to make our democracy real for us. I'll bust your bubble. There is no hope. There's no decision. No, no, no. I think the people that believe in these pastors then it's serious mental health mm. check. Because, you know, people might be thinking, oh, we're just, you know, uncivilized, crazy, mad people. I'm not part of you people, though. <laughs> no, I said people. <laughs> I'm waiting I to say it. my own. No problem. <laughs> That's why I'm talking now. You talk your mm -hmm. own. Funding tertiary education in Nigeria. I fell in love with Toba Femi Aolo University well before I became a student of the institution. From the stretch of well-kept lawns and the carefully laid out trees on both sides of the dual carriageway that leads into the campus of Bafemi Awolo University, it's a beauty to behold. The buildings were architectural masterpieces that were well ahead of their times. Those classes, auditoriums, lecture theaters were fully air-conditioned. As a matter of fact, from the design of some of those lecture theaters, for example, the theaters in White House, that's the physical sciences building, it was obvious that the designer did not contemplate a season when we would not be able to provide air conditioner in those lecture theaters. We were not supposed to ever get that poor. And that was the right thinking in 1962. By the time I actually became a student in 1987, the air conditioners in most of those lecture theaters have packed up and never to be revived. Some years after, when I came on a visit, you could literally fetch rainwater from some classrooms and even lecturers' offices due to major roof leakages. Before I left Ife in 1991, the freshers that came in were already holding classes in the amphitheater and sports stadium. Now, 1991 was 30 years ago, and the infrastructure decay in these institutions have not abated. The bad news, however, is that under the current funding model for university education in Nigeria, things are not about to get better. In fact, they will get worse. I'm constrained to get blunt with this. Not based on current 10 months closure of Nigerian universities, but observations of the university funding space from when I became a student of one of those institutions 33 years ago. Incidentally, during my graduate studies in the US, I happened to have worked as an analyst in a department called Institutional Research in the university. That department was a custodian of the entire university numbers from enrollment to budget. 
and I can say for free that the problem of stretched government funding for university education is not peculiar to Nigeria. The only difference is that they are way ahead of the curve in terms of the attention paid to education. All those new agreements and negotiations being worked out between government and ASU, I'm sorry to say, will be observed in breaches over the years. And this extended strike will not be the last. We are at that junction where stakeholders must first accept this reality and then begin to work out the next phase in the funding modalities for our universities. And that phase will draw resources from places other than the FGN coffers. So there, we need additional sources of income to fund university education. According to donorbox.org, the combined endowment income University research funding from science philanthropy, science philanthropy in the US was about $7 billion a year. That's about 2.8 trillion naira. In 2017, contributions to the US colleges and universities reached $43.6 billion. That's about 17.5 trillion naira, which is much bigger than our entire 2021 FGN budget. And these are contributions, not from the government. It would be simplistic, though, to assume that we can start comparing ourselves with the US. But those numbers should give us a peek into what is possible when we design a workable funding model that incorporates corporate organizations, individual alumnus, and philanthropists in supporting university education funding. I cannot finish my thoughts in this one episode. I may have to consider a part two through another one. Well said, <laughs> Bola Very well said. Well My said. only question, I is know. that your policy very well said, very well said. Well said no, because it, it echoes the thoughts of a lot of us. Yeah. yeah. And particularly, no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just yeah. I know that 5% of every company's um, profit Third fund. is paid as to taxes. the government as taxes for yes. education. Aside from company income tax, which is 30% of your profit, 5%. Yes. 2%, 2% education Contribute, tax. Contribution to TET funds. What happens to the money? Tertiary, it's used for the uh, tertiary, tertiary education. education um, <laughs> in what trust way funds. is this? In what way is this, this fraction, you know? It's, um, it's you no, know, uh, TET fund actually, uh, tertiary education trust fund, they actually you know um but then what do they do because they, clearly they, no, they what have, he has they, said no they develop they are building structures in most of the infrastructure in most of the university but it's not enough it's just a drop you yeah. know the fund is not enough it, compared it's not about to just building infrastructure yes, compared to the universities it's not just about building infrastructure do we actually you know fund research Correct. You know, and even with the well, funding infrastructure, there's a continuous they of slide structure, in infrastructure they of research. Uh, decay yeah. in those schools. In many of yeah, the schools, they talk of uh, they say, "See, you boy is in a father." Now, what for you? See, <laughs> Bolahan said, when they built those uh, structure, the people that built them in the sixties, you know, presumed that being a university, you know, you as a university student, you are not supposed to suffer. Supposed you, to sweat. My my professor, then Professor Unoma, late professor, God rest his soul, now said, as undergraduate of history in the University of Ibadan, then they wear matric gown to the um, dining hall to eat. And you know, it was a thing of honor. And then if you couldn't come to the dining hall, you call and they serve you, you see the uh, waiter with long cap. Oh. You know, we rode the trolley. That will be the day. To serve you your food <laughs> in your room. So that was why they could they could, could protest when the chicken was reduced from uh, half. half chicken to, to quarter, quarter chicken. You know, now, even the chicken you is get chicken, yeah, so, don't so run what we are talking don't about really chicken. is that, you know, the more we started expanding the um, uh, education and then you say states started building many universities, we also needed to take look for a model to fund consistently Correct. fund these universities. Yeah. And so the idea where you practice, um, you have a local government called Nigeria, where the president is the local <laughs> government chairman. 
and then you have governors <laughs> who are just there doing nothing, and then you ask them to build the university, and it okay. become much more Let's take true care. But I to... remember all my siblings went to OAU, actually, and the reason I didn't want to go there was they were always on strike. The University of Lagos that I went to had a system in place where it's the, the same VC... Thing. There's no difference in... No, the VC at the, the time... The structures too are dilapidated. We two and they started building commercial structures in Unilab. I, I say I go there, they don't get... I don't know what you're talking about again. infrastructure. If, this, if <laughs> these young ones don't have decent places to sleep and decent access say, to research, don't, don't then we're not even talking the restroom about... Restroom Sorry, Chuka, the, Chuka, quickly. No, what is, that would be Chuka, quickly, to. wait. What, what, Do you know that yes. these universities are called ASU, withdraw from ASU? The hostess, the hostess. That's what we're saying. Americans who put their prisoners in where we call hey, university what? hostess. I'm telling you, that's you quote me. Quote me. Chuka. Chuka. Well, um, my, my own take here is that you, you this know you are an Abrodian, negotiation is to do person, with ASU. You know, so. I, has the education minister been involved at all? Uh, who is no, he? Not because I may be wrong. I don't want to accuse him of what he has not done or has done. He's no, but even in the discussion, Adamo, Adamo education... Is failure. Education is a complete is not part failure of the negotiation. As a minister of education. He has been there since 2015. It's minister of labor that is negotiating he, on their behalf. Exactly. And, and, and I don't been... know what that man understands about the, the academia at the moment. Adamu Adamu is 66. He's too old for the job. And oh. he's, a, he's a complete failure. He has been there, reappointed. Nothing Five has happened. Everything nothing. is down. I, I, I totally to agree. Enjoy. Not only him, or... I remember his first turn or when um, Queen's College was having the cholera outbreak and we never heard anything from Not him. Not only him, I can begin to count what for you. What about the National Sam Egu. Education Sam Egu. Agency? Sam Egu was education minister as we were on strike and he was celebrating 25 years of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, quote me. Um, Wiki was education minister and this is um, um, a lawyer who the only... The only Credential claim he had. To fame. Yes, claim to fame was he's uh, being a uh, chief of staff and the uh, local government chairman. And so you made him education minister under GEJ. What did we achieve? Nothing. And, and so a situation where you don't even have, you know, people who are knowledgeable in education heading the education ministers. What are we talking about? And then if you contrast that with what we see the Biden gov uh, government doing now, they're handpicking. Don't spoil my day now. They're handpicking people from Harvard, from Yale. Former Surgeon General and no, so on they, and so no, forth. No, here, 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 the new campaign, the new campaign. Are you a member oh of the party? Oh, my word. Okay, then, I'm up next after the break. <laughs>